Trezak shell on the trap. It's too sweet. Anyway, continuing with retired numbers, I'm making the push to 50. That's why there's so many of them coming out lately. That, and I'd like to play catch up on that list. But anyway, talking about our second number retired in Washington. And again, much like the Danicos and the Plager videos that I've done, it's not so much the superstar as much as it is the pillar of the organization. And let me tell you, without his approach or his presence on the team, who knows how the capital's fortunes would have changed in the 11 years he was there. Let's talk about the guy who wore the number five. Rod Langway. Let's do it. So Rod Langway's 11-year stint with the Washington Capitals began on September 9th, 1982, mere weeks ahead of the 82-83 season, when he, along with Brian Engblom, Doug Jarvis, and Craig Laughlin, were traded to the Washington Capitals by the Montreal Canadiens. Go figure, we just did a Canadiens video. For Rick Green and Ryan Walter. Now at the time, this was called a blockbuster. Because, you know, big trades like that didn't usually involve that many key pieces. But, alas, pieces were sent. Trades were made. Now, upon his arrival in Washington, he was promptly named the team captain. A role that he inherited from Ryan Walter, the guy he was just traded for. And a role he would hold until 1993. Now, in this trade, Langway was joining a team with absolutely no playoff experience in their young eight-year history at that point. No real success to speak of as far as regular season was concerned, and yeah, they were in need of something bad. Whereas Langway comes in with a 1979 Stanley Cup ring to his name, so no pressure, but at this point, anything that could help the Caps would be most welcomed. So for the 82-83 season, the Capitals' changes was quite noticeable. Yeah, they'd made the playoffs for the first time in eight years, but more impressively, it'd be the first time that they'd make the playoffs for 11 straight years. So there's that. Now Langley would play in his third NHL All-Star game in 1983, his first as a Capital, and finish off this first full season in Washington with 32 points in a full 80-game schedule. And while, yes, I did say they'd made the playoffs, their visit would be very short, as they would lose in four straight games to the eventual Stanley Cup champs, the New York Islanders, with Langway going pointless in four games. So, as far as turning the ship around kind of season, very noticeable. Langway would be named to the NHL's first NHL All-Star team, as well as be awarded his first James Norris Memorial Trophy, which is awarded annually to the league's best defenseman. So, not a bad first year in one's new surroundings. The 83-84 season would see a great year for player and team alike, as the Capitals would finish second in the Patrick Division, while leading the NHL in a goals against, with a low of 226 goals. That's pretty impressive to keep the puck out, less than 300 times, let alone less than 250. So, very stingy defense, which Langway was a part of. Then Langway would finish the year with 32 points in another full 80 games, while adding 5 assists in 8 playoff games. And much like the 82-83 season, he would again be named the NHL's first All-Star team for the second year in a row, as well as win his second straight Norris Memorial Trophy. Only this year, Langway would finish as the runner-up for the Hart Memorial Trophy, which is awarded to the league MVP. Now, unfortunately, the guy who did win it was named Gretzky, and, well, you know, we'll talk about Gretzky in the 80s in a video, hopefully, by the end of the year. The 84-85 season would be another second-place divisional finish for the Caps, with Langway contributing 26 points in 79 games with only one assist in five playoff games. So the playoff consistency is there. They're continually making the playoffs. They're just not going far. Now Langway would be named to the NHL's second NHL All-Star team, while also being nominated for a third Norris Trophy, but eventually losing it to some guy named 
Paul Coffey, again, who we will talk about later. The 85-86 season would see the Capitals to another second place finish in the Patrick Division. But they were three points shy of first. So they're making consistent ground as far as the regular season is concerned. Just can't get over that hump yet. Now for the season, Langway would contribute 18 points in 71 games. And also played in his sixth straight and his last NHL All-Star game in 1986. Which was also his fourth as a capital. And he also had three points in nine playoff games. Including his first playoff goal since 1980. The 1986-87 season was pretty much more of the same in another second place finish, with Langway adding 27 points in 78 games, while adding one assist in seven playoff games. The 87-88 season was another second place finish in the Patrick Division, with Langway contributing 16 points in 63 games, and you know the history of the playoffs hasn't really changed as the Capitals would make another first-round exit with Langway going pointless in six games. The 1988-89 season, however, would finally see the Capitals break that second-place hump and win their first division championship in franchise history, winning the Patrick Division. So that's finally worth the wait, right? Unfortunately, it would be their only division championship until the year 2000. Enjoy it while it lasts, right? For the season, Langway would hit the 20-point plateau for the last time in his career, adding 21 points in 76 games. The playoffs, however, much of the same story. Actually, pretty much the same as last year. Langway went pointless in six games. 1989-90 would see the Capitals finish third in the Patrick Division. So, you win some, you lose some, right? With Langway adding eight assists in only 58 games. This would be the start of Shortened seasons for Langway. But the playoff run, no, that didn't go as expected. That went better than expected. First, the Capitals would eliminate the New Jersey Devils in six games to face the New York Rangers, who they eliminated in five games, which also included Langway score his last NHL overtime playoff goal, or his last NHL playoff goal if you prefer, as he scored the game four OT winner to give the Capitals a 3-1 series lead. And after eliminating the Rangers, they made it to the Wales Conference Finals for the first time in franchise history, before ultimately being swept by the eventual Stanley Cup finalists, the Boston Bruins. And for his part, Langway would contribute five points in 15 playoff games. The 1990-91 season would continue to see Langway being limited to injury, playing only 56 games while adding eight points including his last regular season NHL goal. And while the Caps tried to replicate the playoff success from the last season, they would be eliminated in the second round <clears throat> by the eventual Stanley Cup champs, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And this was also the start of the Penguins-Capitals rivalry that you know has kind of been off and on since. Langway contributed two assists in 11 games. The 91-92 season would be Langway's last full season with the Capitals, even though he was only limited to 64 games, adding 13 assists on that. Unfortunately, they would draw the defending and eventual Stanley Cup champs, the Pittsburgh Penguins, in the first round of the Wales Conference playoffs, with Langway adding one assist in seven games. The 92-93 season would be Langway's last season in the NHL, and he would only see 21 games. Again, injury, going pointless in those 21 games, with his last game being on February 21st, 1993, with his retirement being announced shortly thereafter. And that is the story of Rod Langway, and the number five hanging up in the Washington Capitals rooftop. Let's go over some stats. So in 726 games played, there's 25 goals, 177 assists for 202 points. As far as playoffs concerned, there's 78 games played with two goals, 16 assists, and 18 points. Now with his time with the Washington Capitals, he's a two-time Norris Memorial Trophy winner, winning those in 1983 and 84, two-time first-team NHL All-Star, 
83 and 84, and a one-time second NHL All-Star team in 1985. He played in the 1983, 84, 85, and 86 All-Star games as a representative for the Capitals. He's a 2002 Hockey Hall of Famer, and on November 26th, 1997, he became the second player to have his number retired by the Washington Capitals. So, here's my opinion. Now, I missed his Norris Trophy seasons by a couple years. I, I, I was alive, but I wasn't watching hockey then. So, I missed probably his prime, but I caught every point from, let's say, 87 on. And watching him, yeah, he was a solid stay-at-home defenseman. And despite what the stats might say, he helped Washington turn into a playoff contender every season, basically overnight, you know, whether or not that was the intent or not. Now, as far as longevity is concerned, I mean, hey, captain for 11 years since day one, since the day he got there to the day he retired. I mean, that's longevity for you. I mean, it obviously didn't hurt that he came from a system that produced a guy like Larry Robinson and brought that to, to his team that had guys like Scott Stevens, who we have talked about, Kelly Johansson, Kevin Hatcher, Ally Frady, just to name a few. With that kind of defensive core, I mean, it's no wonder and no surprise that Washington was able to stay under 300 goals against for 11 straight years while he was there. The team never missed the playoffs. And, I mean, some might call it a coincidence, but at the same time, I mean, again, coming from that system of, you know, the playoffs is an expectation, it's not hard to see that it rubbed off on everybody that Langway played with. Like I said, not so much a superstar, but definitely a pillar and definitely worth his place in the rafters for the Washington Capitals. Another one of Chess Hockey Shows. I thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you've made it here. I know I've putting out a lot of retired numbers. Like I said, I'm pushing for 50. I'd love to go beyond that, but we'll see how far I go because I've mapped myself out with some pretty big ones. But anyway, if you like my stuff, if you've made it to this point, or if you just want to say hi, there's that thumbs up button. You know what to do. That red button. If you haven't done so yet, come on, man. It makes you feel good. You know you want to do it up. And we're pushing 250. We're getting very, very close. So there's that. The social I never use. It's in the description down below. Let's move forward. Like I said, I've mapped myself out on retired numbers. And no matter which way I go, i got a big one coming. But either way, in the meantime, in the meantime, Four videos from Trev. Later.